Procognito, Get Agile Podcast. Working in Remote Environment. Interview with Lizette Sutherland. Hi, and welcome to Get Agile Podcast. I'm Tomek Wykowski from Procognito, and today with me is Lizette Sutherland. Welcome. Proud cheers. Thanks. <laughs> nice to be here. So, Thank you for inviting me. Lizette is director of collaboration superpowers, but also one of few people who talk uh, about working in remote uh, environment before it became very popular topic last year. So you were the expert before all the other people become the expert. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to start with the with the uh, with the question here on the learning over the last year. So you you had already some knowledge before we started last year, but what you have learned over the last year about the working remotely? Uh, well, you know, one thing it's not for everybody. Some people definitely do not like it, and it's just not suited for them. Yeah, yeah for those who are listening, Tomek just raised his finger. My husband is also among the people that just hates it, totally hates it. So, um, you know, I learned and, and got a real respect for the differences of opinion, and I think uh, people should work where they are most productive. And for some people, that's in an office with other people. So I think more kudos to them. Do what you need to make yourself most productive. The other thing that we really, that I didn't learn, but I think everybody else learned was that, um, that people are not lazy. So before the pandemic, managers were very hesitant to allow people to work remotely because they thought that they would be lazy. But we always knew, the data always showed that the opposite is true, that people are tending to work harder because they wanted to keep the benefits that they were getting from remote. So they were making the extra effort to make it work. But what we also saw during the pandemic is that people, we didn't lose productivity during the pandemic. People that were able to keep working did keep working and people are burning out now, like we're overworking. So I think that it really showed that just because we were remote and out of sight didn't mean that productivity was going to go down because we saw in the pandemic that it didn't go down. So that was good. Um, and then the other thing that uh, that I learned, I would say, is that um, I, it's hard to say I didn't learn it, but made so clear that remote working is a different medium of work. Right, like in-person work is one kind of medium, remote is another kind of medium. Uh, in all my interviews, I always say it's like radio and television, right? You have, those are two broadcast mediums, but you have to design content for radio very differently than television. And the same is for remote and in-person. We can't take what we did in the office and do the same things online. It doesn't translate well. It's not the right medium for that way of working. So. Those are sort of the biggest discoveries that I had over the last year. Yeah, so 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 nicely. So uh, not sure which which one to start with, but probably the, the most interesting here is uh, like a, we had to build a trust between the management and and people working remotely because w what you say is like a, uh, that was that used to be a benefit for people. Now it's uh, like a, no option for for most of the organization. Yeah, whether you like it or not, we're remote at the moment and a lot of people don't like it and but we're making do because, you know, we have to. So there's also a difference between when you work with choice and when you're working forced. But I think in this case, you know, it's an opportunity for everybody to look at their workflow systems and to reevaluate how we were doing things before. You know, it's like we have no choice but to to make the best of what we're in at the moment. Yeah, which is kind of interesting because if you used to control people uh, and then, then your behavior had to change when you move to, to online. But also from the like from, from the agile coaching perspective, when I used to, you know, observe the system, how people behave in the system uh, and make uh, some observation based on uh, based one on what I see or make some nice makes make some suggestion based on what I see, I cannot see them right now. So do you have any suggestion for the agile coaches who try to understand how the, what is the dynamic of their team, for example? Well, I mean, in that way, we have to observe people in different ways, right? So one of the things um, that we need to make really clear is uh, what are the goals? Like, what are we aligning around? In the office, you can kind of be a little bit sloppy around that. I mean, we're always aligned, but remote, you have to be perfectly clear 
about like what is the goal that we're trying to achieve. And then we observe people in different ways in that uh, I think there's more one-on-one -on -one meetings. There's more asynchronous communication. There's sort of sort of a, you know more feeling through how we're communicating via text. But I think that there's just more communication in a different way. And yes, I'm not saying it's better. It's certainly easier when you're in an office and you're able to actually physically observe with your eyes what's happening in the office. I mean, that to replace that online, you just can't replace that online in the same way. It's just, it just doesn't translate. So we just have to use these different ways of, of building trust. And I really think that being totally aligned having a working agreement where everybody understands how we're working together, you know, and we agree to how, like what normal behavior is on our team and then working out loud and making our work visible to people. I think that's really, that's how we observe what's going on. Now I've never been an agile coach, so I can't, you know, I'm not going to claim any sort of expertise in this area at all, but I'm just speaking generally how we all need to sort of behave differently. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 what, what I was saying, uh, what, what, what I still say is basically that the best place for the agile coach is like a coffee machine because you get can get all the information about what is happening in the uh, in the company when you're standing next to the coffee machine. So, you said about the uh, wor working and uh, agreements. You said about the uh, you know different ways of uh, synchronization uh, and uh, communication. Can we dig into some specific details, like few things you would recommend? For, for, for those people. Oh yeah, so okay, so I've been really diving into this area lately. And one of the things that we're all suffering from is too many meetings, right? So um, so this is gonna be like a, a, a trail to how we need to change the way that we're working online. So one is we're having too many meetings. We're, we're spending too much time in 2D. You know, when you're at the office, you're, you go to 3D meetings, you know, with people. And so, but, but really, literally, as remote workers, as knowledge workers, we are staring at our screens way too much. And when we get off work, we're doing YouTube and Netflix. You know, we're spending a lot of time on the screen. So the, the easiest thing, the lowest hanging fruit is taking more breaks. And that means shortening your hour long meetings to 45 minutes, I would say, like get crazy, go to 45 minutes, take a 15 minute break in between. Now the advice for breaks is that you involve some sort of movement away from a screen. So for me, it's like running up and down the stairs. We have like 10 neighbor cats that come into our backyard. So I have a lot of incentive to go all the way down the stairs and out the door into the garden to like, there's always a cat there. So that's always good. Um, and then taking a break outside is the recommendation. So um, one of the things that we're noticing during a pandemic, especially during a pandemic, right? It makes it extra important is that we're not taking enough breaks. So really taking breaks between meetings, that's level one. Level two would be, defining next, do you really need that meeting to begin with? Or can all of it or part of it be done asynchronously somehow? Is there a smarter way of doing the meeting? So then you evaluate, okay, if it's just status updates or if I'm giving a presentation, maybe I record the presentation before the meeting starts. We all watch it beforehand, offer feedback somewhere, and then we really get together in the meeting to make a decision kind of thing. So really getting smarter about how we use our meetings and having better meetings too, meaning every meeting has a purpose, it has an agenda, and it starts and stops on time, right? Like basic meeting protocol stuff. So really improving meetings. And then the third level, I would say, is sort of the next step after really going asynchronous, because right now I'm seeing on social media, everybody's focused on asynchronous behavior. But I think that what the danger of focusing too much on that is we're replacing conversations, five minute conversations with like 20 email thread back and forth. So all of a sudden, instead of just talking to each other, we're just bombarding each other with messages all day. Like one of the facts that I read uh, is that we're checking our inbox once every six minutes on average and Slack or one of your whatever IM tool once a minute. Like that's craziness. So the next level of that is to figure out how can we stop the barrage ping pong of messages going back and forth. And in order to do that, what's recommended is we improve our workflows. Like with knowledge work, there's always some sort of a workflow, a system that we put in place in order to get the work done. We need to improve that so there's less synchronous ping pong messages back and forth. Cal Newport calls this uh, phenomenon the hyperactive hive mind, where, where we swarm together and talk all day long 
but we're not actually getting any deep focused work done. Now, not all of us need to do deep focused work, right? Like as an agile coach, your job is to be by the coffee machine, talking to people to understand what's going on. So like you want to be in that hyperactive hive mind some of the time. Um, but what's sort of happening is we're, we're spending too much time in that hyperactive hive mind and people are overwhelmed with messages. So, I mean, that's a lot in one, but I would say an easy place to start is with ourselves and figuring out how are we sending messages. Like, and I can give you an example of what, what affected me. Uh, when I assign my web developer or my assistant tasks in Trello, I would just create a card, write my idea down and think like, ah, oh, we'll figure it out when we when she's ready to do the task. Now what I do is I make the task complete, right? Like I have a little video about what I wanna have done. I have all the stuff that she might need to do the task. So she doesn't even have to come back to me for any questions. That's one way that we reduce the ping pong back and forth. So anyway, that's a long way of saying like, here's like here's the progression of how I see us changing the way that we work online to make it more sustainable and productive. Yeah, so 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 basically, I mean, two two things I, I want to pin here is one is like even if we in the when we've been in the office and we move from one meeting to another, at least we have to move. At least you right. have to go to the next room. You you could get a coffee. You could use the bathroom in the uh, on your way to the next room. You don't have it. You spend like eight hours sitting. And and the second thing you also mentioned at the very beginning is like uh, people want to give more. So if you spend eight hours in the office, then after eight hours you know you're done. Now if you take a break because you're doing a uh, you know know whatever you need to do at home help your kids uh, with the uh, with the homework uh, do something in the kitchen do anything else you think okay I should work a little more and people end up w w working like 10 11 12 hours right right and that's exactly what we need to stop and all of the productivity um, any of the books that you read about it really they'll say uh, you want to have two modes if you're especially in this pandemic with knowledge work in this way it was easier in the office but uh, uh, when we're at home you want when you're on be on and when you're off be off like you know I've really since the pandemic started I used to work all the time like I'd take breaks during the day and then I do a little more at night but since the pandemic started I've actually cut off my working hours at 6 p.m. that's it I turn completely off. I don't check email, nothing. And then I let myself. And it's it's done wonders for me just during this time. It might not be the thing that I keep forever. But right now, I you need that off time somehow or just the time away from the screen. And I picked up a hobby that wasn't screen related. Like I used to love watching comedy videos at the end of the day and stuff. But I, that's just too much screen time. I just, I started sewing. I mean, just for something. <laughs> you know, I wasn't even that excited about it. But I had to do something else. Uh, something in 3D, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and and, and there's uh, there's another thing you mentioned about the, those emails and and, uh, and the uh, information, some pop-ups coming in every few seconds, every few minutes, uh, and which you no. Know, we are not able to focus basically and, and to do a complex task we need to have like an hour two hours five hours of being not uh, disturbed by anyone but we just can with the tools so you have any recommendation based on your experience on here yeah i mean it'll depend on the job but uh of course like i would think as a programmer I'll just say for myself, because I'm not a programmer, but I, <laughs> but I know the kind of work that programmers do. Like I see and I'm like, oh, that's like a puzzle, right? Like you need to dive in. For me, my favorite day is when I've got a whole day uh, with no meetings, nothing on it. And then I can just dive into work. And that doesn't mean that I'm diving into work the entire day, but I've got the day to choose. Like, oh, now I need to go on a walk and think about it a little more. Now I'm going to dive and do this. Like, and there's no, no structure binding me in anywhere. Those are my favorite kind of days. So like, if that's the kind of day that you need to really for yourself, dive into something and take enough breaks and have the day for it, then you need to schedule that for yourself. It's difficult, of course, when you're working with a team. So in that case, you might experiment with things like, um, you know, you decide that you're going to have the hive mind, the synchronous hive mind for two hours a day in the morning and one hour in the afternoon so that you know that everybody knows you'll check in from eight to ten and again from four to five but in between between ten and four that's all you so you could just decide as a team like okay we have hive mind time 
on these. So just figuring out a different, like one, figuring out how much time do you need for deep focus in general, like what's your ideal, and then trying to design around that with your team. Because I, I guarantee everybody on your team needs some time for deep focus. And if you can help schedule it with each other somehow, um, it would just make everybody's lives better. Yeah, turn off the outlook, turn off uh, any communication and just spend two hours, you know, focusing on something that is important from yeah, the goal perspective. The exhaustion doesn't just come from being staring at the screen. The exhaustion comes from the constant switching back to checking email like that every six minutes. That's where the exhaustion, like part of the exhaustion comes from. So one, it's taking breaks, but also we need to focus. I mean, as knowledge workers, that's the one thing that we have to offer is our brain and our ideas. Which also reminds us to turn off the phones, not just the, not just the, you know, outlooks on the laptop, right? My, my phone is on mute all the time, basically. Yeah, I never, I I think I answered the phone for my husband and no one else. Like, I just hate the phone. I hate the phone. Yeah, so everybody has a different level of what they need. So that's what makes this whole thing so difficult is, you know, my friend Jen, she loves the pings and the 50 tabs open and all, like, that's just how she thrives. For me, I'd be exhausted after an hour. So her workday is designed very differently than mine. And that's, I think, what makes it hard is we all have to figure out for ourselves what is it that we really need. And like, okay, now that we know what we really need, how do we then work together as a team with people who need totally different things? Uh, which which point out that basically creating the working agreement for the team is even more important now than, than uh, when it used to be in the, in the physical world, right? I, yeah, I think it's critical for a remote team. Okay, uh, so so we talk about uh, uh, how to reduce the pain of uh, people working in remote uh, environment. Uh, any other tips or tricks for those people? So anything you you would uh, recommend people if uh, if they're they feel they're tired with this way of working? Yeah, I think really what I said is re uh, more breaks between meetings and less meetings, uh, more time for deep focus. And, and then uh, being on and off. And then the only thing I would add to that is, uh, you know, the basics in terms of like nutrition, sleep and exercise. I just, you know, when you're remote, it's uh, everybody needs to focus on those anyway. But I think remote in a pandemic, forced remote during a pandemic, it's like kind of go, I just say go back to basics to make things better. Everybody's suffering right now from just sort of the repetitive nature of, being in one place all the time, you know, like every day is the same. Every Monday, I'm like, oh my God, it's Monday again. You know, so that, there's also a mental burden there that we have to take care of for ourselves. So I have lots more remote working tips, but for for well-being, that's about where I would stay. Okay, so 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 can can we somehow uh, share them after the the conversation? So do do we have any links that we can share later on or, and and put it under the video recording later on? Do do you have for, anything? Absolutely, for well-being, you mean? From from surviving in the remote world. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, we we we, we go, we're gonna put them uh, put them here. So uh, let so 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 two, we, we mentioned two things. So one of the things you mentioned at the very beginning is that the productivity didn't go down, which is kind of interesting, and and the trust level has either to go up or people had to you know do something about this. Is and 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 the manager has noticed that it's more about them than about the, their teams with with the trust level. And the third thing we said is like uh, being uh, working remotely can can make you way less tired than working in the office. Uh, any other significant change you've seen uh, over the last year uh, from what it used to be? So so any other impact in in, in the companies? Uh, well, just that uh, now that we've all gone remote, the majority of people don't want to go back to the office full time. I mean, we're seeing that all over whenever any poll that I've done and I've done, I don't know, 50 presentations in the last six months or so. And every poll that I've done 80 to 90% of people want to continue working in a hybrid way. So they don't want to be remote hundred percent. Definitely not. Um, like about 10% of people want to go back to the office full time. The vast majority want to work in a hybrid way. So the good side of that, or the good news of that is that it provides maximum flexibility 
and uh, for you know for freedom for the for the person. The downside of that is that it is by far the hardest way of working. So I think um, you know yes yeah woo woo hybrid it offers all this freedom, but I think that we have to take a really serious look at how to make hybrid work in an organization because it's going to require everybody's proactivity to make that work. You can't just leave that to chance, right? Because chances are it's going to fall apart. That's just a hybrid is really hard. So I guess that those 10% person that wants to go back to the office are the, the people who are living in the small flats with kids. Oh yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. <laughs> All right. So so give, given your experience, what would be your recommendation regarding, you know, how to set up the uh, the hybrid office? Uh, so the one thing that I would say is, um, you definitely want clear goals. Like what are you doing? You want to really look at how are people working? What do you need infrastructure wise? Because the idea here is you want to make communicating easy. You want to make it like Star Trek, right? You push a button and it's like Lisette to Tomac report, you know, and, you know, and it's like easy. So you want to be able to with where anybody is, you want to be able to move from synchronous to asynchronous modes of communication very easily so that you don't have to schedule a meeting, so that you don't have to like see if someone's available. You just push a button and you can talk to people. So I think that that means, um, one, the people that are going to be working remotely have to be in a place where they can easily connect. So you have to have a good internet connection. You have, you have to have your own personal good infrastructure if you're going to work in a different location. So whether it's from home or co-working, wherever. In the office, it also has to be the same. There's going to have to be enough conference rooms or noise canceling headsets or spaces for collaboration. Like the way we use our office is going to need to change. And it's going to, I, I think, you know, it's going to, it's one of those things like when you move into a house, you move things around for a few months while you're really sorting out your own personal workflows. The same thing's going to happen in the office. We're going to need to like shift and change and experiment with what's going to work best to help us connect as teams. And then the team agreements come in like really handy there. Like what is normal behavior in this hybrid world? Are people expected to be, uh, you know, and working core hours together or, you know, how are you going to, how are you going to connect with each other? How, you know, all of that stuff. It's, I think that's the biggest thing for coming up. So infrastructure. So it's uh, clear goals really easy communication. And then the thing to be focused on is results and reliability, right? Like are people producing results and are they reliable? Can you find them if you need them? That's the kind of thing that we need to be looking at. Yeah. One of the uh, observation I had before the pandemic is that uh, the teams that were fully remote were could be more productive than when you have a team that is co-located and you have one uh, uh, person, one, one, one employee working remotely. So, so you get all the people, you know, sitting in a room and there's one guy who don't know what is happening because he's not joining all the conversation, right? So, so this is the, the yeah. biggest problem of working in hybrid environment. You have people who know what is happening and like one, two people, one, two persons who have no idea what, 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 what is going on, right? Yeah. I mean, and in that case, I really think that this is where technology comes in handy. I mean, if you have one person who's remote and everybody's working at the same time, like same core hours, I would really recommend looking into things like telepresence robots. So that person can have, while remote, a physical presence in the office, right? Like they still are physically there, even though it's via robot. But, you know, once you get used to a person in a robot, it actually feels like they're in the room with you. They're, that robot body just replaces their physical body. It's weird how you know, you get used to that. And then if you have a different setup, maybe a virtual office is what you need, you know, where you can see where everybody is. If you have like a bunch of people working remote, a bunch of people work in the office, maybe, you know, your virtual headquarters needs to be the place that, uh, that you're all aligning. So I would say that it, depending on, on what your setup looks like, you need to be looking at the various technology that exists to help you bridge that gap. But the good news is that the technology exists, right? And it's not that expensive anymore to get a telepresence robot. I was experimenting with it like eight years ago and stuff. And it was super, it was like 20,000 euros. Like you could never do it. But now you could get a telepresence robot for 500 euros. You know, it's it's like totally yeah, worth experimenting it's, with. It's cheaper than the, than the high quality camera right now. Right, right. So like, I think as a business, you've got nothing to lose. Like that stuff will only help you understand your workflows and help people connect better.
Yeah, what well, one of the one of the positive side of this pandemic is like a, the the productivity or the, the quality of the tools we use for the remote uh, corporation like uh, they go they go like a you know way up and even the teams has the room so you can now divide people after a year of working on that feature hey, hey they have those <laughs> those room feature but you can finally divide 20 people into a smaller group so you don't listen to the loudest people in the like the loudest person in the on the call right competition goes a long way <laughs> to drive innovation absolutely yeah okay really like that um any final thoughts, uh, recommendation for people who still uh, have a challenge working in this, in this environment despite a year of, after them? Uh, yeah, know that it's going to end, right? Like the, <laughs> hopefully if the vaccines work and, you know, all of that, um, uh, that, that this, this will also end. So it's not forever. That's one thing to really keep in mind. Um, and then the other thing is just to start preparing Start preparing your office for like better workflow systems. Start working on yourself to get your own like less ping pongs, more breaks, make it more sustainable. And I would say use the benefits, really take advantage of the benefits that remote offers while you can. Like take the long lunch, go start training for a triathlon, like all the things that you know, you couldn't do while working at the office. This is the chance to sort of do that now. But it's also necessary as a remote worker and taking care of yourself to have something beyond a screen um, and to, just to move. So yeah, I would, I would say that. And then really, and I know this sounds like shameless promotion and I don't mean it as such, but I, because I think that remote really is a different medium of work. If you're really struggling, get yourself training. Like there's lots of great trainings like mine. There's lots of other people's trainings out there. Like, you know, get um, clean language training, get liberating structures training, get, uh, you know, online meeting facilitation training. There's all kinds of great things to sort of up your skill in this area. It will only help you for the future because clearly it's not going to go away. Right, and we're gonna try to put some of those links into into the train, uh, the video the, the description. All right, thank you very much for this conversation uh, and still hope to see you in the real world. So totally, later. nothing like the 3D world, right? Like nothing like a beer and a plate of nachos somewhere. <laughs> All right, thanks once again. Thank you. To learn more, visit procognita.com slash get agile.